We're in the heat of summer, but it's gonna start winding down. It is time to think about fall, your fall programming, and what you are going to do. Maybe you have given it some thought, or maybe you're still on vacation tuning to this, and you're like, why are you talking about this? I don't wanna be thinking about this right now. But you know what? It is time. Don't finish summer without a plan to engage your church and your community with a big fall programming launch. I'm excited about ours. We do the semester-based system at West Bradenton, particularly on our Wednesday night programming. Sundays are always there. Uh, but we do a spring full programming session and a fall pro uh, full programming session. In the summer, we do summer suppers. We do old school dinner on the grounds where we all eat together, which is great. But it is time to start thinking about your fall programming, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we get into the subject matter, I want to thank our sponsor, Upward Sports. Guess what? They can help you with your fall and winter sports. So It, it is one of the best outreach ministries for the community that I could think of. Tell your community, we are going to provide sports leagues for you. Or, and then Upward comes in and does it all. I'm sorry, I interrupted your, 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 your sponsorship spiel, but I just love this organization because they just... They fit so well into what our churches are doing. Yeah, yeah I, I'm very grateful that we have a partnership with them uh, because they do things that we don't do at Church Answers, and they do it really, really well. Um, and this has just been a, a really good partnership for us to have. So lots of people are interested in sports in your community. Um, your church, I'm sure, is willing to help out with reaching the community. How do you do that? Well, you go to Upward Sports, particularly upward.org slash church answers. Again, upward.org slash church answers. And that is where you can go sign up for a startup sports grant of $500. So that is an incredibly generous offer. If you're thinking about your winter sports and what you may be doing during that time, well, hey, just reach out to them. They can help you get going and reaching your community whether that be Wednesday night programming or some other night of the week, uh, they can uh, they can get you started. So upward.org slash church answers, go claim that startup grant of $500. You talk about rhythms in church life as much and as well as any church leader I know, both at your local church level and then for the broader congregational life, particularly in America, but not just limited to that. Where, where 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 did this come from? I mean, was it just a natural thing that you began to talk about the rhythms of church life and how if you understand the rhythms, it's going to make your church healthier if you really align with them? Uh, it was natural, maybe more strategic. Uh, I was just hearing from parents. So where this all started was many, many, many years ago in Indiana when I was pastoring a church in Indiana. And I, I just heard from parents like, hey, do we ever get a break? And I'm like, no, no, you don't. Every Wednesday, every Sunday. We were doing the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving's on a Thursday. I didn't we were know that. still meeting. And and I don't mind that. And if a church can do that and have people there, man, that's awesome. Uh, you know, the early church met like every day in people's homes. So, you know, if you could gather every day, there's nothing wrong with that. But most people do better when they have just that natural rhythm and they tend to be more connected and attend more frequently when they know the beginning and the end point. And so I, I know how my generation thinks and, you know, a lot of the older generations, they, if the church doors are open, they, they are there. We're dying. And we'll all be that, dead that, soon. That mentality is dying. I think it's unfortunate. Goodness, please. Uh, if more people were like that, it would make my job a whole lot easier as a pastor. I'm just saying we're older. I'm not saying we're right. I'm just saying we're older. We're dying. I, well, I think there's more good to it than bad when it comes to dying. Or well, my church is doing something. I'm there. I think that's more good than bad. But that's just not the way people think now. And, it, you know, you do have these natural rhythms with school. And so we play. I just said, well, let's. Start mirroring the school system. Um, when school's out, it doesn't mean that we don't gather. We just do some different things. We don't do our full programming. 
So at West Bradenton, as I've mentioned before, we, we have our summer suppers during the summer. And we have about half the people there, realistically, than we otherwise would on a Wednesday night. So that's our Wednesday night programming. It's just a big, giant mill in the fellowship hall. Everyone's there together, and that's all we're doing. It's obviously not volunteer intensive at all. We just have our kitchen crew that's there, and they love that, it. They, they, and that's, they love summer, that's summer only, right? I want to be Summer clear. only. But spring and fall is when we do our big launches. So we take a break shortly after Thanksgiving through December, because we've got so many December activities. We pick back up in January for the spring launch. We wind down the Wednesday before school gets out. And then we have our summer suppers. And then we wind up in the fall the Wednesday after um, school gets back in. So we're playing into those natural rhythms with that back to school emphasis. So Sunday will be, you know, in the fall, we'll have a promotion Sunday, which is old school terminology, I know, but kids get promoted up a grade. So that's when you, you know, move up from third to fourth or fourth to fifth, or whatever it is. Um, and so we'll do a big promotion Sunday emphasis. And then Wednesdays kick back in right after school starts. And so let me tell you, it Go works ahead. really, really well for your parents. It starts drawing in young families. When you just say, we're always here all the time, you've got to be here every week, um, it tends to push people away. So this has been released on July 23rd, this particular podcast. So now what you're, you're advocating is, hey, church leaders, you've got about a month. Let's get everything ready for the fall programming. Let's let's get this launch an extra boost. And you're going to give us some insights in what some of those boosts might be. Yeah. The, the first thing that I'll say, how do you get the boost? How do you get the launch right? You've got to align all your ministries to launch at the same time. When I got to West Bradenton, I asked, what time does Wednesday night start? And it said, well, it depends. Choir starts at 530. Middle school and high school starts at six. Children start at 615. And then some of our groups start at 630. And I was like, why? Well, it was easier on the staff to do that. That's why. So the staff had created their own little schedule and everyone else kind of had to, hmm. you know, adhere to it. And I said, no, everything starts at 615. Everything. Now, some of the students like, hey, can I open the doors a little early for them and let them come early? Yeah, of course. Yeah, but the programming, advertised programming start time is the same. So not only do you need to line up your launch days, whether it be promotion Sunday or Wednesday night programming, you need to line up your times. Uh, because if you don't do that, it's just really confusing to people. And when people are confused, they just don't come. If they're like, okay, what time is this? What am I doing again? They just say, you know what, I'll, I'll catch it the next time. And these are good people who mean well, but confused people don't show up to church. So your your rhythm on a day basis is Sunday morning and then back on Wednesday night. You'll occasionally yep. have some kind of meeting on Sunday night if it's uh, some kind of community or group like that. But for the most part, the rhythm is Sunday morning, Wednesday night. You're not a Sunday night worship church. No, and this is a good point um, because I've talked to some churches – who Wednesday night's very problematic for them because they're a commuter area. Like we're just South of Washington, DC and our people can't get back in time because everyone's commuting in and traffic's horrible or Dallas or Atlanta or whatever. And so there's a lot of churches that do Sunday morning, Sunday night rhythms mm -hmm. and it just works, works well for them. Um, most churches will probably find that Sunday nights are less attended just because people are getting ready. If you're talking about young families, they're getting ready for school the next day. So we do something year round Sunday morning, Wednesday night. But we break it up on Wednesday nights again with summer suppers in, in the summer, and it's uh, it's it's less it's less people who attend, but at least we still have something going on. But yeah, we have two time slots that are always the same, always the same time. Everything launches all at the same time. Uh, that way, it's just easy for people to remember. So alignment for what you're talking about is not only alignment of ministries to purpose, like in the simple church, it's alignment of time. It's alignment of, of seasons. It's a lot more than just aligning purpose to, to uh, the programs or ministries. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you do have to get everything lined up. Um, otherwise you just won't, you, the family that's got six people in it and they're all going different directions 
they're not coming to your church because they all got to get there at different times. You know, they, they all kind of want to come at the same time, uh, if, if at all possible. Sure. Um, the other thing that I'll say is there will be days when you should expect more guests. Believe it or not, that's in the summer. And you will have more guests on your down attendance Sundays than you might expect. Uh, because that's when people are checking out a new community. Uh, if they're moving, that's probably when they're on, they're, you're on a holiday. So they're, they're looking at churches. Um, so the days that you, you might think are down days should actually be extra hospitality days because you will have more guests. I tell my staff all the time, summertime, just expect more guests because that's when people are, are moving to Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. They're trying to get here before school starts. So they move in June and then they start looking for a church June, July so that they can land in August. So you can't give up on hospitality even in the down months uh, because that tends to be when more people are looking for a church. And you have mentioned this, but just kind of flesh out a little bit more. You like the idea of a promotion Sunday. You, you really want to push people uh, and, and to have an excitement about that particular return time. I do. We launch a lot of groups on promotion Sunday. So, you know, it's big for the kids. So we really go all in with this. We send out mailers, we send out reminders. Uh, it's a big celebratory thing. Bring your friends to church. It's promotion Sunday. Um, so we really push it hard uh, to like everyone be here all on this day. We're launching. Now, did we meet the week before? Yes, we met the week before. Um, but th this is the day that we emphasize you need to be here where, you know, we've, we've got this, a lot of times curriculum turns over then I might start on, I'll start a new sermon series. There's lots of things that are there to kind of draw people in. And we even do this with the adults, even, even the, the classes that like have stayed the same for years, there's traditional Sunday school. They always meet, they're always there. Even then we're telling them, Hey, this is a good time to bring your friends. So what it does is now the whole family's there. And a lot of times these families will, Hey, bring your friend from school. Um, it's a good day to do that. So I do think even, and you could call it whatever you want to call it. Promotion Sunday is a really old archaic term. Um, and I get that. Um, so you can call it whatever you want to call it, but the concept is what's important. And I think the concept is still a good one. And, and I've seen some promotions call it back to church Sunday. It's just, yeah, you're getting back in the habit of church. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's great terminology too. You can market this however you want to market it, whatever you think will resonate with your community. It's the fact that you're emphasizing a Sunday when everyone needs to be there, when you're launching your, your fall programming, which tends to be for most communities, you know, late August. Sure. Sure. And then also I have found, uh, text to church communication channels to be very, very, very important. Uh, so whatever software system you use, um, Church Teams is a good one if you're wondering about a particular system. Um, so we send out messages to uh, the entirety of our church to communicate with them, and we do it via text. Uh, we have an email newsletter, which is helpful. Um, that's our digital newsletter. Uh, it goes out Mondays with my devotional, which is for my sermon coming the next Sunday. So I'll write a short devotional for the coming Sunday. Kind of give people a heads up of what the sermon's about. And then Thursday in the email newsletter, um, it'll give the happenings of the church. And here's what you, you know, here's the things you don't want to miss. Click this link to learn more sort of stuff. But the text to church communication channel is very, very important. So uh, at the time of this recording, uh, I know this will air on July 23rd, but when we're recording it, we're about to do our July 4th uh, emphasis at our church. And uh, we're going to, we're not doing our 11 o'clock service. We're combining the nine 30 and the 11 o'clock service into one. And then we're having a big hot dog and, uh, ice cream thing afterwards when the 11 o'clock service would usually meet. And that's the only time that we combine services in the year. So we're going to send out a text to the entire church. Um, there's about a thousand people that will get this text. It says, don't forget tomorrow. There is no 11 o'clock service. You, if you typically come to the 11 o'clock service, you need to come to the nine 30 service. And oh, by the way, uh, bring your appetite because you're going to have hot dogs and ice cream at 1045 in the morning, but it, people love it. So, um, you know, that text to church communication channel is very important. You don't want to overuse it because it gets annoying if you overuse it. 
But if you use it for the big stuff to remind people like on a promotion Sunday, it's there's like a read rate of like 96% on Amazing. these things. Amazing. And people will read it within five minutes of getting it. So and, this is a really good way to communicate with your church. And it should be included in almost every good church management software. It should. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of good of ones. Package. There's lots of good ones out there. Good. And then uh, you, you talked about the digital newsletter. So you send that to everyone as well. So you have, you have the text that's going to the church. Then you have the special digital newsletter. And I'm guessing the digital newsletter is the one that's more frequent than the text. Absolutely. Um, people are used to getting their emails on Mondays and Thursdays from us. Um, and the reason we do Thursday is because that's after Wednesday. So then it can look forward to like the next six days because when they're on campus on Wednesday, we can tell them things. So we, we basically follow up Wednesday with a Thursday newsletter. And that's why we like the Thursday timing of it. And the last thing that I'll mention, and this has been hugely beneficial to us in ways that I just, it didn't click in my brain until we started doing it. Um, we use short links and landing pages. And some people may not know what those terms mean. So let me kind of define them. A short link. So our website is westb.org, W-E-S-T-B.org. A short link would be vbs.westb.org, give.westb.org, guest.westb.org, prayer.westb.org. So anytime we're promoting something, it's the name of whatever we're promoting, a really short word attached to our website. And then it takes them to a landing page, which is like a separate page specifically focused on whatever it is that you're pointing them to. And people have found this so helpful. There, VBS is a good example. And at the time that this airs, we would have already, we've already finished our VBS. But people are like, now where do I register for VBS? Just go to vbs.westb.org. How do I volunteer for VBS? Just go to vbs.westb.org. Dot org. How do I sign up for a group? Go to groups.westb.org. And it's a really, and people just type it in their phone, goes right to the place where they need to go. Those short links have been invaluable to us as we communicate certain things to our church, uh, particularly if we're launching our fall programming. We'll have landing pages specifically for students and children. And, you know, hey, go to students.westb.org and, you know, you'll see everything that you need to see there. Um, so that way people aren't going to the website. Cause a lot of times church websites can be cumbersome. You've got to dig around. It's three, you know, it's three layers in, you can just send with that short link. You can just send them right to where they need to go. And it's pretty easy to remember. Uh, and it also gets them on your website, which is always a good thing. Well, this is July 23rd. If it's the day that you picked up, uh, started listening or watching on YouTube, uh, maybe you watched or listened later. And so it's not July 23rd, but you're probably, most of you, probably 75% of you are listening or watching and your fall activities, ministries, programs have not begun. These are some great tips for you to give a boost to your fall programming and your ministries. And this is, happens when you have the rhythm. I could sing. I have got, I've got rhythm by the happenings, but I'm not going to do that. I've done that in two previous episodes and the uh, listener downloads and viewership all went down. So I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> it is this whole thing about making certain that your people know when, what happens when, and that's best done with a rhythm. Speaking of best done, California Baptist University. Sam and I have mentioned on a number of occasions how much we loved our visit there, just the sheer beauty of the campus and uh, what a great job they've done with the aesthetics, but it's more than the aesthetics. It's so much happening in the heart of California Baptist University. Here's one thing, a new degree, a new online degree and organizational leadership. I love the idea behind this. And it might be some of your staff could benefit from this. Some of your key lay leaders. Uh, it's really designed for the working professional in mind. It's a degree in organizational leadership. And it includes all kinds of great topics, influence, problem solving, decision making, conflict management. Now that we, you and your churches have to worry about that. Uh, it's practical, but at the same time, it offers a lot of depth. And it starts every eight weeks, like their digital rotation does. California Baptist has rhythms, so you can get in on the rhythms of California Baptist. So you can get started at any time, take eight weeks, take a break, or continue on 
whatever you want to do. So visit calbaptist.edu to learn more. The link is in the show notes, and you will be able to get, find an incredible degree that may be of great benefit for your staff and your key lay leaders. As always, thank you for being a part of Rainer Own Leadership. Give us a thumbs up at YouTube and subscribe there. Please do so. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting app, give us a rating, a review. That helps us to get the message out so that we can continue to equip churches to do the work of ministry. As always, we appreciate you, the listener, the viewer, at Rainer on Leadership. We'll see you in the next episode.